Have you ever seen one of these? Well, when Starlinks are launched, it's nearly impossible to miss them in the night sky. And no, they're not UFOs. but it's a train of Starlink satellites. In fact, a lot of you have probably seen these with your naked eye. We've seen news stories covering this across the country. You know, are they aliens? No, it's just SpaceX Starlink satellites. But I point this out because the brightness of the Starlink satellites has been a point of contention for the astronomy community. How big of a problem have this, you know, there's been concern about the light pollution for astronomy and even just nighttime photography. How big of an issue has it actually been? Well, so far it's just been a nuisance, but remember there's only, there's only like two, 3,000 of them up right now, right? The problem for us is gonna be when there are 30,000. Right. Uh, as, and 50,000 from other constellations. And we've learned that SpaceX is continuing to make good on its promise to reduce that brightness. They just released a new update with some new technology that's even more effective to do this. Having Starlink be less bright means less light pollution and more preservation of our nighttime sky, which, yeah, we all have to share. They, you know, SpaceX have put in clearly a lot of effort and a lot of money into trying to develop ways to make their satellites less egregiously bright. And it's not clear that it's going to help enough, but you got to, you know, be fair. You got you you got to appreciate that they're putting in the effort. So so, thank you, SpaceX. On the other hand, their Gen two satellites are so much huger. Yeah. I am a little skeptical <laughs> that they're, you know, I, I, I worry that they're gonna be super bright anyway, whatever. A recently published document from SpaceX outlines what exactly they've been doing to accomplish this. It's quite a long update, but it's really good. And the cool part is they're offering this technology at cost to other satellite companies so they too can mitigate their brightness and reduce the impact on astronomy and the night sky. SpaceX talks about in this document how by working with the astronomy community, they have been able to develop these techniques to dim or reduce the brightness. The first gen satellites experimented with sun visors those didn't work so well but starlink v2 sats will use these rf transparent mirror films this is an alternative to the sun visors the upgraded satellites the version 2 starlink satellites will have this upgraded technology that spacex says will reduce their brightness these three components dielectric mirror film solar array mitigations and black paint the film will cut the observed brightness from Earth by 10 times and it will cover the bottom of the satellites. The brightness of satellites has actually not been something that in the history of the space age people have worried about with the exception of the National Reconnaissance Office who did experiment with putting shields up around a couple of their satellites to stop nosy people like me determining their orbits. Uh, and, and so there's been a little bit of stealth satellite work, but not much really. Uh, and, uh, and so it's really only been, you know, because honestly it's not a problem for when you have, you know, five or six satellites, if they're bright, that, that we can deal with. It's this future where we have 100,000 satellites that are bright, that, that uh, changes, the environment and makes us have to worry about this as an issue for the first time. So how exactly are they going to mitigate the light bouncing off these solar panels? Well, SpaceX has made them more absorbent by adding a dark red intercell backing material. So look at the difference between these two photos. Now this has the side effect of reducing efficiency and it does increase current operating temperatures, but it cuts back on that Earth side glare. And in the second generation hardware, SpaceX will use an internally developed new kind of black paint. This black paint has low reflectivity and it's five times lower specular peak compared to the darkest available space stable paint. The company is quoted saying SpaceX's goal is to make its second generation satellites invisible to the naked eye when they are on station serving users. However, we still have a big problem. Getting these next generation satellites to station is currently still kind of impossible. That's because the second generation satellites are too large and heavy for anything but SpaceX's yet to launch Starship 
to get them into orbit. And check out this clip from a recent Everyday Astronaut interview with Elon Musk where he points this out plain and simple. The success of Starlink is hinging on Starship. We need, we need uh, Starship to get to orbit because it's, it's also got to, uh, it's the only thing that can carry the Starlink two satellites. Yeah. So Falcon uh, has neither the volume nor the mass to orbit capability uh, required for Starlink two. Well, and the other thing is they need Starship to launch those much heavier V2 sats. Right, they do need this rocket that hasn't yet flown. Yes, that, that is true. Um, so so we may have to wait a while. Uh, but, uh, I, you know, I, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll see. The, the, the big question of whether Starship will work and will work reliably is is i think the big question of of space exploration in our time and and you know a year from now perhaps we'll know so i know that a lot of people have slammed spacex for this brightness issue and so i'm glad that they were able to provide this update if you want to look through the entire document it has really uh detailed descriptions and it makes it really easy to understand for the layperson so i will link that in the description but this is just a quick update for you. I want to know if you are a nighttime sky photographer or maybe someone in the astronomy community. Is this something that is good news to you or are you a little bit skeptical of all of this actually making a difference? Let me know what you think in the comments again. Please be sure to like this video if you haven't already. Subscribe to Ellie in Space so you don't miss anything because well, we don't have Cyber Rodeo this week, but we do have Cyber Roundup. That is the Tesla shareholders meeting, and I will be there. I'll be on the inside getting some information for you. So you won't want to miss it. Be sure to subscribe so you don't, and I'll see you in the next video.